Welcome back to Switched to Linux. Well, today we're going to look at the first official Ubuntu Unity flavor. Of course, Ubuntu switched from the Unity desktop environment back to GNOME to reprioritize itself on resources for IoT and a few other things that the company felt more important. Well, some people did grow accustomed to liking the Unity spin, and so... One person took it upon themselves, or maybe it was a team, I, I forget all the fine details, of creating a spin on Ubuntu. Now, in 22.10, recently released, was the first time that that became an official Ubuntu flavor. So the flavors of Ubuntu, these are the ones which are officially recognized by Ubuntu as qualified Ubuntu distribution flavors, meaning they are Ubuntu with a different desktop environment. So we do have a number of these here. We have Kubuntu based on the KDE desktop, Lubuntu with the LXQT desktop, Ubuntu Budgie, which is consequently my favorite Ubuntu uh, flavor there is, we have the Ubuntu Kylin for Chinese users, a little sus if I'm honest, we have Ubuntu Mate. Now, the Mate is one that has had a lot of work done to it and a lot of feeding back into the Ubuntu core. So this is by many considered the best of the flavors. It's just not personally mine because I'm not a huge fan of the Mate desktop environment, but nevertheless, it is still pretty good. We have Ubuntu Studio, which is kind of a standout, and it's not just Ubuntu, but it's an Ubuntu fine-tuned for a variety of creative suites, audio engineering, musician, graphic designer, photography, video producer, streamer. This particular version, it's based on Ubuntu, but has a lot of advanced tools and things put in with, uh, I believe, the XFCE desktop environment. It doesn't tell us right there. That's kind of a little standout. And here's where we get, we'll get to Zubuntu last based on XFCE. And then here is the one we're talking about today. The first time ever that Ubuntu Unity is an official flavor of Ubuntu, uh, well included. And the developer here did a great job of making sure that it was uh, available, followed all of Ubuntu's policies to make sure that we had a distro that uh, really can speak for Ubuntu itself. So here is their desktop again, which is just ubuntuunity.org. You can download it over here. You can click over here and see the team. We have a project lead, and then we have a team of folks that are involved in doing the, the build. And these guys do a great job uh, this one is really nice, and uh, for those of us that did come to Linux during that golden era of Unity being the desktop environment, you will probably really like this as a throwback uh, to the good old days of Ubuntu. Of course, it does use Unity 7, not the train wreck that was attempted to be Unity 8. I don't know if they have any plans to uh, do that. But I like to hear their feature is Unity 7 ain't dead. She ain't dead yet, Jim. Um, so uh, we do have uh, we do have a, a little bit of modernized tools. We have ported Yaro to Unity 7, replacing the old ambience theme. However, if you want to stick with the ambience theme, you could go ahead and use it with the Unity tweak tool. There are some goodies, some old loved Unity 7 goodies like the HUD, global menu, so you can continue using features Unity 7, which you had on the previous versions back as far back as 1710, I think is when they, uh, that was the last time it was out there. So uh, with that though, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and boot this guy up. Once again, we are using... Uh, GNOME boxes for this build because I'm switching over to GNOME boxes uh, for most of my work using visual uh, virtual box, excuse me, for uh, some elements inside of the um, inside of the, the work with VMs. But what we're going to do here is I'm just going to go ahead and boot this guy up. Now, the installation of this guy, uh, it just follows the standard Ubuntu installer. There's nothing magic, nothing special. In this case here, what we have done is I went Went with the, um, uh, I went with the uh, minimal install, so I didn't have to download a Office suites and things like that. 
So go ahead and get logged in over here. Uh, once again, we are on GNOME boxes, so we get a little bit better performance than uh, virt the modern VirtualBox is becoming. So uh, here is landing on our desktop, and uh, we just have the nice purpley theme. Of course, they went to this kind of this orangish, more to this more purplish uh, in all of Ubuntu throughout the time. Uh, we have everything here is the common Ubuntu uh, Unity that you may uh, know and understand. Here's the about the computer things. Let's go ahead and pull up the about the computer. So we have uh, six gigs of RAM available to uh, to what I have here in my settings. Um, it is using uh, the full of the processor minus what OBS is doing to record. Um, we have our graphics, OS type, disk type, you know, nothing major in there. We have default applications over here. So I don't, is Rhythmbox installed? I guess it might be. Of course, I do not know how to spell Rhythmbox, so there it is. It is. All right, hey, I'm like one of the world's worst spellers. If it wasn't for spell checking stuff, I wouldn't write. Uh, we have VLC installed. Here's removal media, legal notices, searching in the dash legal notices that caused a little bit of controversy. We'll get back to the system settings another time. You can get to the system settings over here. We have our basic options. Now we do have a very nice um, theme switching option here. This is one of the new features that Ubuntu itself had put in. And so uh, Ubuntu Unity incorporated this to change out some of the themes and such. I guess uh, just hitting the switch theme there just toggled between a couple different other ones. Here we have our accent colors. So you can choose different accent colors for things inside the menu. And I'm not sure where that's going to show up. Let's pull up uh, pull up files. Okay, there you go. So now we're starting to see the olive color uh, showing up in there. Let's switch it. Let's do a purple. So this is one of the things that Ubuntu itself has added in is just uh, some color switchers, accent colors, kind of bringing things up a little bit more modern. So uh, as far as the applications installed by default, we can come down to the Applications tab. Here's our Recently Used and 52 applications installed. Again, this was the minimal install. It still gives us Rhythmbox. It still gives us, uh, I think VLC is on the list, gives us... Um, Firefox as a web browser and Thunderbird as an email client. So nothing super uh, out of the ordinary there. Uh, overall, the I bit found just working with it for a few minutes here. It is a, uh, a nice stable system. I didn't notice any real issues with any stability or anything else. Here's our full system settings. We have online accounts. So if you have a variety of online accounts, you can go ahead and uh, do that. We have brightness and lock screen security. Here's our basic hardware, our basic system settings. So software and updates, you can go in here. This is um, going to resemble the same one that you've seen in Ubuntu. So you can uh, look at the different software. I think I pulled up. Nope. Uh, you can kind of look at the where the different server is. Here's other software. So if you had any other PPAs, it'd be in there. For updates, so snap package updates are checked routinely and installed automatically. This is why I don't like Ubuntu. I do not want you changing my system automatically. Um, ooh, it's for security. No, you're just pushing more crap features and changing my applications, which is exactly what I don't want in a production environment. Oh, uh, what does it look like? I'm using Arch here. I have no idea why it's asking me for a password right now. Uh, that's exciting. Um, we have, uh, you can do all updates, you can do security and recommended, you can do security only. Uh, you can check for updates either daily, every two weeks, weekly, every, every two weeks, or never. And then you can download and install updates, download automatically, or just display automatically. And then when there are updates, you can do immediately, weekly, every other week. And then you can do just LTS versions or any new. This is an important one for Ubuntu because if you're unaware, um, the LTS version, which is going to be the even number 04 version, so 2204, 2004, 1804, 1604, those are LTS. Um, but the other versions that they do, so the dot tens and the even uh, odd number, excuse me, 04s, those ones there 
Uh, those ones will push new features. They'll do testing. They'll do weird things like implement pipe wire alone for the first time, implement Wayland alone for the first time. They use them for, for bug testing and things. If you do any new version, you might roll up to a non-LTS, and that might mess with a, your workflow. So if you are sticking to those LTS, make sure you just have this uh, changed over. Of course, the default is any new version, so be aware of that. So your authentication, uh, additional drivers, so any proprietary drivers are going to show up there. And then you can do pre-released updates, like any upcoming proposed updates as well. You can set those on or turn them off. Those are all, um, uh, those are all uh, available on any form of Ubuntu, not just this one. All right, so we have time and date, other options there. Nothing out of the ordinary. Now, as far as the things that you guys uh, have generally asked about, let's go ahead and walk through uh, how much, uh, how many system resources does this guy take? So here is on my uh, getting old Ryzen 5 1600. This does have access to all my cores here. We're running 1.2 gigs of memory out of the 600, uh, 6 gig that I gave it. 600 gig, man. This is a super computer. Uh, 6 gigs I gave it. It's running 1.2 gigs. So a little bit heavier as far as um, environments and things like that. Uh, desktop options, of course, these are the flavors of Ubuntu. So Unity is the only option in this case here. And there's really nothing unique about this particular build that's not unique specifically to um to Ubuntu uh, Unity. As far as the kernel is concerned, um, we're running 519 kernel, so there are newer kernels out there. You probably can install newer kernels in this uh, following any procedure for Ubuntu. I know I've done it before, so uh, we're not going to cover how to do that. But just so you know, it's running 519. Why they pick 519? Well, because it's stable and it's going to work with a variety of hardware. So that works out pretty well. Uh, the last thing that is important is software. Uh, so our software sources, uh, we have Synaptic Package Manager, and we have Software and Updates. I believe that's going to be our software center. No, that's that. Excuse me. Do we not have a specific software manager? We might only have uh, Synaptic on here. That's interesting. I would expect to find a Ubuntu software store like the Ubuntu store. Let's go ahead and see if the Snap store is installed in here or not. So it looks like we do not have a good GUI software store in here. We have software and updates. We have software updater. Those are both going to take us to our basic, um, uh, just our basic Ubuntu tools. Nothing else. I'm wondering if that was excluded because we did the minimal install. I really don't know. Uh, so we have Synaptic Package Manager on here. Okay, this begs some extra investigation. Let's see if um, snaps are installed. Let's see if it's snap version. So yeah, snap version is here. Let's do snap list. So we have bear, core, Firefox, GNOME, GTK common themes, and snapd. These are install the snaps. So yes, the snaps are here, but yeah, we don't actually have the snap store installed. That's very interesting. So as far as your installing software, the only option that you have is Synaptic Package Manager. So uh, if you're looking for a pretty uh, gooey software installer, this one will not have that installed, at least not under the minimal install. It might be there under the full install, but I just did the the uh, miniature here. Of course, the applications, we just have basic system tools, um, Thunderbird, Firefox, and a few other things there. And so uh, with this, um, uh, with this, what we're seeing is that uh, overall, it's going to be a, a pretty good uh, setup and it seems to be pretty stable. I've not seen any real issues as far as the stability right here. We have a good build based on Ubuntu with Unity. And uh, overall, it's going to work pretty good. Downsides, of course. Uh, well, first and foremost, I don't like snaps, um, particularly having themes and core elements installed as snaps. 
uh, but that's what we have. We don't have a GUI software manager, uh, so you're going to have to do everything through the terminal or Synaptic Package Manager. Of course, you can install the Snap Store. Um, in fact, let me just go ahead and show you guys how to do that uh, using the system. It should be, if I remember, Snap Install. Is it Snap Store? We should have... Um, it should be a Snap Store, I believe it's called. Let's see if that happens to be it. So it's downloading the Snap Store. So there it is, and it's downloading it pretty quickly. And this is what you're going to want to do if you need a um, a nice package manager, uh, just a a GUI package manager. Of course, Apt is available in here, and the Snap package manager is available in here. So there we are. We're setting up the Snap Store. We're running all of the hooks. Uh, configuring the hook of Snap Store if it's present, and it says it is now installed. So now let's go ahead and Ubuntu software is now available. So I'm not sure why that wasn't included, unless, like I said, it's because we have the minimal install. Um, I'm not sure what other software manager you would use. And then it's just going to go ahead and download. And for the very first time you run this, it's going to take a little bit of time to get everything populated. Uh, once you have it populated the first time, though, it's not going to take this long to get booted up. So it has software ready to be installed. We're going to push cancel because I don't want it to install software right now. We're just in a VM right now. All right. There we are. Now we have a software store. We can see the list of available updates over here. SnapD and Core uh, are both available for updates. And we can explore like VLCs installed. I might want to do KeePass XC. We have Snap options. And there's probably a repository option as well. Let's go ahead and search for KeePass. Here's our KeePass XC. That's the same one we just had. I'm not seeing a repository version of KeePass XC, so uh, that kind of frightens me a little bit. But uh, anyway, uh, there is our quick look at Ubuntu Unity, the first time that this was released as an official documented flavor of Ubuntu. Have a look at it, particularly if you like the old Unity platform. Uh, let me know in the comments what you think about this one down here. Um, overall, I like it. Um, I do still like the 1604 theming a little bit better and I like the more modernized type look but hey that is uh whatever um overall it is pretty nice if you are looking for a good Ubuntu if you like Ubuntu and you're looking for something a little bit different maybe a little something a little bit more retro this definitely is a good option so go ahead and check it out at ubuntuunity.org Thanks for watching, everybody. We do have a series of support pages. Uh, those are going to be on the website, switchtolinux.com. We are in the process of getting that site revamped up, so it should be uh, the new site version should be up there um, sometime soon. We are still working pretty quickly on it. You can check us out, though, on Locals now, switchtolinux.locals.com, or on Patreon, patreon.com slash T-O-M-M, or subscribestar.switchedtolinux. Thanks for watching. And we will see you next time. Thank you for watching this video from Switched to Linux. This channel would not be possible without the backing of the program supporters scrolling on the screen now. You can be a supporter at Patreon at patreon.com slash T-O-M-M or at thinklifemedia.com. I also want to thank the open source community who creates such excellent software that makes producing this show possible. Please remember to support your software communities. Thank you, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.